Today, we're diving into the black hole that swallows nearly 85% of all emails sent globally, the dreaded spam folder. You know, sending emails these days is like trying to deliver a pizza in a neighborhood full of guard dogs. You have good intentions and delicious content, but sometimes you can't get past the gatekeepers. What's up? My name is Ace with Miller Lite. Let's face it, we've all been there. You craft the perfect email, you're obsessed over every single word you write, you hit send with confidence, and like that, crickets. Your masterpiece has likely been banished to the shadow realm known as the spam folder where emails go to die. But before we dive into the solutions, let's understand what we're actually up against here. Email delivery isn't just a simple A to B process. It's more like sending your message to an obstacle course designed by an evil genius. Your email has to actually pass through quite a few things first, like your ISP filters, email client filters, sometimes even corporate firewalls, and finally, the ultimate boss battle, the recipient's personal spam settings. Fun fact, did you know the term spam for unwanted emails comes from a 1970s Monty Python sketch about spam meat that was essentially everywhere and unavoidable? It's pretty fitting considering unwanted emails make up about 45% of all email traffic today. What are spam filters anyway? Spam filters are like those overly suspicious airport security agents of the internet. They scan every email, checking the sender content, and even how recipients interact with your previous messages. And just like the airport security, the rules seem to change consistently. Like one day you're sailing through and the next day they're confiscating your metaphorical email toothpaste because it's 3.5 ounces instead of 3.4. These filters work on a point system where each suspicious element basically adds a point to your spam score. Too many points and you're going straight to spam, do not pass go and do not collect 200. How spam filters judge your emails. Spam filters use complex algorithms to score your emails. You could think of it like a digital version of hot or not, except instead of rating attractiveness, they're deciding if your email is legitimate or suspicious. They look at your sender reputation, your IP address and domain reputation are like your email credit score. If you have a bad reputation, you're gonna get the digital equivalent of application denied. Content analysis filters scan your subject lines, body text, and code for spammy patterns. It's like uh, having your email read by the world's most judgmental grammar teacher. Engagement metrics, how subscribers interact with your emails affects future deliverability. If you have low open rates, high unsubscribes, that's like getting bad Yelp reviews for your restaurant. It's not good and you wanna try and avoid that at all costs. There's technical configuration as well. Things like authentication records and list hygiene that really matter. It's the email equivalent of having your paperwork in order at the border, for example. It's like dating. You need to have a good reputation. You have to say interesting things and make sure the other person actually wants your attention. Otherwise, you're going to probably just get blocked pretty quickly. Here are seven ways to stay out of spam land. Always get permission first. This is super important. Always use double opt-in where your subscribers confirm their email address. It's like getting a VIP pass to the inbox party. Using a reputable email marketing platform like MailerLite makes setting up features like double opt-in and managing your subscriber consent so much simpler. And instead of buying email lists, which is email marketing's cardinal sin, don't do that. <laughs> Create compelling lead magnets that make people want to sign up. A good lead magnet is like a good cheese on a mousetrap. Irresistible, but without the, well, you know, the deadly snap part. Keep your list clean. Remove inactive subscribers regularly too. Sending emails to people who never open them is like telling jokes to people wearing noise canceling headphones. They can't hear you and it makes you look bad to everybody else. Also, pro tip, run a re-engagement campaign every six months or so. If subscribers haven't opened in that time, send them a we miss you email. And if you get no response, just cut them loose. It's the email version of it's not you, it's me breakup, except in this case, it really is them. Authenticate your domain. Set up SPF and DKIM and DMARC records. These are like your email passport, visa and security clearance all rolled into one. 
super important that you lock this down. According to Valamel, only 30% of domains have proper email authentication set up. That's like 70% of people walking around with uh, I might be an imposter written on their forehead. It's not good and your emails are not going to get delivered if that's the case. Next, avoid spammy content. Skip the all caps, uh, excessive exclamation points and spammy words like free, guarantee and no risk, things like that. If your email sounds like an infomercial at 3 a.m., spam filters will show it the door faster than a bouncer at a club. Obviously, that's what we're trying to avoid here. Instead of something like spammy, free gift, act now, limited time offer, say something like your complimentary guide is ready for download. See, that, that already sounds so much better, right? Send content people actually want. Be relevant and valuable. The best way to avoid the spam folder is to send emails people genuinely look forward to opening. Pro tip as well, segment your list and personalize the content. It's like knowing your friend hates cilantro and not inviting them to the cilantro themed dinner party. It's just basic courtesy really, right? And also balance text and images. Too many images with little text is a spam red flag. You want to aim for a balanced text to image ratio here. And also, fun fact, emails with three or fewer images and approximately 500 words of text typically have the best deliverability rates. Think of it like a good sandwich. You need both bread and fillings in the right proportions to just be delicious. Maintain a consistent sending schedule. Erratic sending patterns raise suspicion. It's like that friend who only calls when they need something and eventually people stop picking up for that reason. It helps to create a content calendar and make sure you stick with it. Whether you're sending weekly or bi-weekly or even monthly emails, it's really good to just try and get consistent with it. Common deliverability mistakes. Neglecting mobile optimization. Around 60% of emails are open on mobile devices. If your email looks terrible on a phone, chances are it's gonna get deleted really, really fast. And also, shameless plug is super easy using the drag and drop editor from MailerLite. And it'll automatically help you make sure that your emails are mobile responsive. So it's one less thing to think and have to worry about. Ignoring your metrics. Deliverability issues usually show warning signs before becoming catastrophic. You wanna watch for declining open rates or increasing bounces. For example, a 5% drop in open rates can signal the beginning of deliverability problems. It's like ignoring the check engine light on your car. Like, yeah, sure you can do it, but don't be surprised when you're stranded on the email marketing highway and nobody's really opening your emails or coming to help. Gmail and other providers actually track how many people mark your emails as spam as well. In fact, just one spam complaint per 1,000 emails can really damage your sender reputation. What to do if you're already in spam trouble? Start by fixing technical issues. First things first, make sure your email setup is super, super solid. That means getting your SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records in place so email providers know it's really you. Also, check whether your IP address is blacklisted or flagged anywhere because that can stop your emails from even reaching the inboxes too. And fixing these technical details is the foundation. You can think of it like making sure the door to your house is locked before you invite guests in. Without this, your emails are likely to be blocked or sent to the spam no matter how good they are. Next, clean up your email list. Take a good look at your mailing list and trim it down. Remove anyone who hasn't interacted in months or whose emails just bounce back hard. Keeping people around who don't want to hear from you can actually really hurt your sending reputation over time. So try setting a clear rule for inactivity like six months of no opens or clicks and either send a re-engagement email or just remove them from your list entirely. Doing this regularly helps keep your list fresh and improves the chances your emails will be welcomed rather than ignored or marked as spam. Rebuild your sending volume slowly. Once your list is clean and your technical setup is good, don't rush into blasting emails to everyone all over again. Start by sending to your most engaged subscribers, the folks who open and click your emails regularly. Then gradually increase the number of people you email over time. 
watching your stats closely to make sure your deliverability actually improves. This slow and steady approach lets you rebuild your sender reputation naturally and keeps inbox providers happy. It's like earning back the trust step by step instead of expecting it to happen all at once. Remember though, the goal isn't just avoiding spam filters, it's creating emails your subscribers genuinely want to receive. So focus on quality over quantity and you'll build a loyal audience who actually looks forward to seeing your name in their inbox. Think of email marketing like being a good neighbor. Don't be the one who shows up unannounced, stays too long, talks too loud, and keeps asking for favors. Be the neighbor who brings homemade cookies occasionally and always has something very interesting and positive to say. If you found this helpful, smash that like button and subscribe for more email marketing tips. Drop a comment below about your biggest email deliverability challenge and I might cover it in my next video. Until next time, I'll see you guys all in the next one.